AJ AFK here, back with another video for Comfy UI. Uh, in a prior video, we had done some in painting and automatically replaced a person using Control Net with the same pose. Uh, we are going to take that idea, expand upon it, replace multiple people using different Loras on the same photo. Now, without further ado, let's get started. As you can see from this spaghetti mess, there is a lot going on here. So let's see if we can try to break this down one piece at a time. At the very top, I just have a, a quick group bypasser so that we can start with one image and then move on to everything else that's going on. If we look at the input section, this is where all of our selections are made for the overall composition. Let's start here at the top. We need to select our checkpoint. If you need to set a clip skip, you'd like to choose a different VAE, you can switch back and forth between the baked in and your own. We have a LoRa stacker for things that will apply to everything within the composition. Uh, we are just using an LCM LoRa and a regular model, non-LCM here, uh, that will greatly speed up the process of the image generation. Uh, we are going to make a 768 wide by 512 photo. And we have four different inputs for text. Now this is designed for two people to be in a photo and then those two people to be replaced by different Loras. So we have a man and a woman at a table. And in the background, we have in a tavern. We describe person A, which will be on the left, a girl with long blonde hair. And person B, which will be on the right, a man with short dark hair. Now, it doesn't always produce those types of results in the photos, so you may have to play with a couple of seeds before you get one that does uh, kind of work that way. Uh, when we get into all of the various person outputs, uh, we'll go over why. Let's go ahead and we have our seed for the image here. Go ahead and cue that up. Uh, now we will be working kind of left to right, and I like to keep the controls I will need next to the images that are generated. Now this doesn't look like a horrible photo, except there is a third person in here, and this will kind of mess up some of the automatic uh, segmentation and detection here. Let's try another seed. And we possibly have some people in the background there. Otherwise, not bad at all. We have a pretty clear view of both people. And we definitely have a third person in that seed. All right, no third person anywhere to be found. Now, he also doesn't have short dark hair, but not a problem. We can see in the show text, when it puts all of our prompts together, we do have the in order, a man and a woman at a table, a girl with long blonde hair, got that so far, a man with short dark hair, eh, not so much, in a tavern. Why we have these all separated is so that we remove the initial text on the next outputs, but we keep the background append so that it will uh, put proper shadows and lighting on them, different things like that. Uh, what we're going to do with this image is run a uh, person YOLO model, which will segment the entirety of the body for us. So we don't need to manually impaint on this image. Uh, it'll just detect where the person is, grow the mask a slight bit, uh, feather that out, and send it to ControlNet. So let's enable person A. We have K sampler for person A. We have ControlNet for person A. And we have an output for person A. That, that's just where we uh, display the, the picture here. What we're going to do is select the person. Now, 
different segmentation models are going to select the people in different orders. You can play with ascending, descending order, things like that. I just like to change this number. Uh, it starts at zero. We're going for two people, so it's either zero or one. You got a 50-50 shot. So change take start if you need to. And let's queue this up. Now, since we have a fixed seed, it's just going to skip generating this image and move right along to our next image. So this silhouette here in white, the so person A is in white, is what it detected as person A. Now they do have pretty much have to be on the left. Uh, the way this is designed, um, there are some pieces that will not work quite right if it detects the person on the right and you attempt to just deal with it that way. So go ahead and select this back the other direction if that's the case so that we get the person on the left. We have them masked. Then we have a control net detecting what position they're sitting. We have selected a custom LoRa. Uh, this is part of a collection I've made for uh, Viva La Dirt League people <laughs> for Epic MPC Man. So this is Epic Brit profile view. So we have replaced the entirety of our description, a girl with long blonde hair. We've replaced that with Epic Brit profile view. So I've put the trigger word and then described what I want her to do, which is looking sideways. So we've replaced this blonde girl, that's a generic uh, person out of Juggernaut, with Epic Brit. And that is a pretty good resemblance there. Now, you can see it's not exactly refined very well. This is a first pass, uh, I believe eight steps, eight or 10, but that's okay. Now that we have person A replaced, we take the remaining segments and send them over here to person B. Now, if you have more than two people in the photo, you may need to change the take start on this one, but hopefully you only have two people in the photo. Let's go ahead and enable person B. And before we do, you can see in the show text that Epic Brit Profile View has been replaced from a girl with long blonde hair. So this is just kind of showing you the output so that in case you made a typo, you can correct that. Go ahead and enable person B, control net B, and output B. For this one, we are replacing a man with short dark hair with uh, Epic Balin. Uh, let's uh, let's actually do Epic Baradun. So High Sorcerer Baradun. Baradun. There we go. And if we cue that up, it should detect him on the right, and it does. It properly segments out this person here, which is the same as the first photo. We haven't done anything with this area. And then it detects his pose and puts Epic Baradun there. It kind of <laughs> kind of missed the top of his head. <laughs> but this Laura does look a little bit overbaked. Uh, let's see if we can turn that down just a little bit. if that helps us. Not really. But you can see the point there. So now that we have two characters from completely different lores that didn't get mangled with each other, uh, let's clean up their faces. So we're going to take all of the model pipes, so the, the model and the clip of lores, and we're going to send them down here to uh, face detailers. This is just a generic detailer. Uh, we are segmenting from the uh, a different YOLO model here. This is the face YOLO. So it's going to get the whole face. 
and make a preview image from that and then make a, a case sampler pass. Go ahead and enable both of those and see what happens. It takes the image that is over here in our final pass, and it replaced the wrong person. So we <laughs> so we got a nice mangled uh, photo here. So we tried to replace uh, Baradun's face here with um, the non-NPC character of Brit. So to correct that, let's go ahead and change this take start to one. And that should replace the two of them. All right, so now we are actually repli replacing Brit's face with Brit and Baradun's face with Baradun. And it looks like it did a pretty decent job. So the detailer did detect that she was looking sideways and that he was looking mostly forward, so it fixed a little bit of that. Uh, hopefully, the lores that you use don't completely miss the the head up here, but we weren't supposed to start with a tall man with um, long blonde hair. It was supposed to be a man with short, dark hair. Uh, there are a few other things that could be done with this workflow. Now, you could obviously take and uh, duplicate these to make a person see and so on. That would get really complicated. Uh, you'd be starting and stopping a lot to do that. Uh, the input, instead of having this as a case sampler, could just be used as an image loader and go ahead and take a pre-existing image and do the automatic in painting with it. I hope this helps. Uh, this is version two of this particular workflow. Go ahead and save it as is, and I will post this new version, along with the video, at the Civitai in the link below. Go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any trouble. Until then, stay safe.